it's me, Alex, and everyone's favourite bird, Archie. So today we're going to have a look at a couple of new launches. We're looking at the Jeffree Star Morphe collab, the James Charles Morphe palette, and the Morphe Fluidity Foundation Concealer and Setting Powder. The main focus of today's video is the fact that Jeffree Star's brushes look awfully similar to brushes that you can buy on AliExpress. Now, uh, what I have here in front of me today is a set of seven brushes that you can get on AliExpress. This set that I have, there are seven. Uh, here's an image up here of the actual brush set, of the listing on AliExpress. The brushes that this one comes with, you have a couple of eye brushes, there's an angled brush, there's what appears to be a foundation brush, a powder brush, a highlighting brush, and a contouring brush. Now, Now these sort of brushes were a really, really big trend. Maybe a year or two ago, I remember they were everywhere. Basically every store had a brush like this. Whether it was the same color or the same handle style, it was very, very popular. So that's why I was really surprised to see Jeffree came out with the basically the, the exact same handle. So the Chinese manufacturers that have the molds for these sort of diamond shaped handles, that's probably where Morphe has had the handles themselves manufactured, but I'm expecting that the brushes themselves are going to be very different. I really don't think that someone like Jeffree Star would risk his reputation or his career or his integrity just slapping his name on brushes that are straight out of China from AliExpress. I can understand the handle, that's one thing, but the brush itself, that's something completely different. So I actually, I have my delivery here, it arrived today. I picked up two brush sets so that I can do a giveaway. I'm gonna give one to someone that watches this video. And I also have the James Charles palette and I have another one that I'm going to include in the giveaway. So in these boxes here, I got two lots of the brush set. I got the makeup sponge set. I got the Morphe Fluidity Foundation in two different shades. I got the concealer in two shades and I got the setting powder in two shades. And I also picked up a new uh, eyebrow pomade as well. Pomade, pomade, whatever they call it. Uh, I picked up a new one of them because the one that I use at the moment is shade Almond. I tried to pick one up that's a little bit lighter than the one that I've been using just to see what it looks like. So let's pull these open. Okay, Ooh. Morphe return policy. <laughs> That's promising. Purchases made on the website can be returned up to 30 days. Shipping fees are non-refundable. You can return online purchases at a Morphe store. Well, we don't have any Morphe stores in Australia. I did buy this off Morphe Australia, so I don't know why they're saying that. Okay, so here are the two brushes. So I'll leave one nice and wrapped up, brand new, for the giveaway. Okay, so we've got uh, Jeffrey's eyes here, and um, the look on his eyes literally says, Give me a bad review and I'll end your career. I'm just slightly scared about this video. So slide this one off. There's the bag. It's got sort of holographic trimming, which Christine would enjoy. I do find the bag really interesting because the zipper is actually on the corner. Like normally the zipper would run down the center, but it's on the corner. So I really like that. It's a little bit different, unique. And here are the brushes. And right off the bat, they're actually a lot more pale than I thought that they were. When I was looking at them in images, I thought they were a little bit more of a hot pink, but they actually seem really, really light pink. So my very first impression is that they're not very heavy. They feel very, very light. I don't really like that. I like to feel a little bit of weight in my hand. They do feel a little bit cheap just from the handle. I suspect that is because this is just a generic handle that they've just got from a supplier in China. They haven't really put much thought or design behind this handle. It's just a mold from China. I'm just gonna pull up one of these brushes and yep, just like I thought, they're identical. As you can see, the diamond sort of pattern it's exactly the same. Ignore that part because those are definitely different and I do believe that that would come separately. They wouldn't include that part in the production of the handle. That would be something that the company themselves would have to add outside of this design. But the handle, it is exactly the same as the handle on the brushes from AliExpress. Now, obviously you can see that the colors are different and I do quite like the color that Jeffrey has gone with. I think it's definitely on brand for him. But what we're interested in is the actual brush part because that's where Jeffrey would have come in. The actual design of the brush itself would have been up to Jeffrey. He would have probably decided the cut and the shape and the density of the bristles and things like that. Now, I do believe that there's like brush for brush in this set. I think that they're parallel. Okay, so here they all are lined up, brush for brush. 
So as you can see with the foundation brush, the AliExpress one is a little tiny bit thicker than Jeffrey's. Jeffrey's gone for a, a much thinner handle on the powder brush than on the AliExpress version. When we get to the contouring brush, these two are exactly the same handle. There's no difference at all. They're exactly the same width, the same weight, the same size. On the highlighting brush, you can see Jeffrey's highlighting brush is really, really skinny. It's like one of the eyeshadow brushes but their highlighting brush is a lot thicker. It's got basically the same size handle as the contouring brush there. With the eyeshadow brushes, these are all the same as well. One, two, and the third one here from AliExpress, they're all the same. But you can see that the difference here is the angled brush here. So Jeffrey's angled brush has this really, really cool pattern like that, whereas the AliExpress version is just the same as all the others. What, what do you think, Archie? So having a look at the tops of them, you can see they're all different. So this part here is definitely custom made on Jeffrey's. They, they don't have the same sort of weird pinched in sort of goldy colored one. So you can also see at the top here, the foundation brush or what I was thinking was the equivalent of the foundation brush. Jeffrey's is kind of like a, a round version. This one has sort of this pinched in shape like that and it's wider like this. The powder brush, the AliExpress version is a, a big dome like that. Jeffrey's one has a, a different shape. I mean here, this is just no comparison at all. None of them are the same. The closest would be the angled brush and perhaps the blending brush is somewhat sim- uh, Excuse me. The blending brush is somewhat similar, but still very different as well. So it's really just the handles. That's the only similarity. So uh, what do you think, Archie? Let's jump into it. Okay. I ordered the blending sponges, but they're, they're not there. They haven't sent me the blending <laughs> sponges, but they're also not on my invoice, which is weird because they were definitely in my shopping cart. Maybe they oversold items or something. I don't know. Maybe they, for whatever reason, they haven't sent me the sponges, but it looks as though they're not on my invoice. So I guess I didn't get charged for them, even though they were definitely in my cart. I was awake at 4 a.m. for this launch. It was 4 a.m. in Australia. I was like the first person on the site and I got these, so I don't know, I guess when they were packing, they've, they've made a mistake. But anyway, so I've got the Fluidity Foundation. So I got it in F1.30 and F1.60. Now I picked these shades because when I was looking on the website, they had this weird system for determining what shade you are. And I was really annoyed that they didn't give you that sort of similar option where you can shade match based on based on your shade from other brands. When you go on Sephora, it gives you the option to put in the brand that you're already using and the shade from that brand, and then it'll tell you the most similar shade. But this Morphe website didn't give me any option like that, and I really couldn't tell based on the pictures, but there were two people with red hair on this little slidey thing that they had on their website, so I just went for the two shades that they recommended for people with red hair. I also got the concealer, but what the hell? One of them has a box and one of them doesn't. Like. Why? I don't understand. Why would they send a concealer with no box? Does that mean it's been opened? I don't know. Uh, anyway, so I got shade C1.25 and that one is... What shade is that, Archie? 1.15. Oh, I got the primer too, I forgot. I got the Revitalizer Primer because I have more dry skin. There is like a matte version of the primer, but I feel like that would just dry me out too much, like tissue paper. The setting powders that I picked up are Filter 2 and Filter 1. And then I've got a little eyebrow product, which is the shade... Biscotti. That's such a shame that they didn't send me the sponges. But you know what? I do actually have... I do have the red one that all the beauty gurus talk about. I bought it because every beauty guru and their dog seems to say that it's the best thing since sliced bread. So I did buy it. I'm not the biggest fan, but I do believe that Jeffrey's pink one is literally just that exact same sponge, but pink. They didn't charge me for the one that they didn't send, so whatever. So I'm just going to quickly do a little bit of makeup science. 
And I'm going to pull out a scale and I'm going to weigh these and see how we go brush for brush weight comparison. Because I'm really interested because the AliExpress ones feel very, very cheap and light and Jeffrey's ones feel a little bit cheap and light as well. So let's have a look at that. So, yes Archie. Yes, the, the scales. We'll go in with the foundation brush. We have 20 grams, Jeffrey's. 36 grams. Now the weight is definitely coming from up here. It's coming from this part and it's coming from the hairs themselves because they're a lot more dense. The powder brush, hey, no, don't, don't rig the results. Don't rig the results. The powder brush is 27 grams. Jeffrey's powder brush is 24 grams. Contour, we've got 12 grams for AliExpress. Oh wait, no, Jeffrey's is 15. Highlight. AliExpress is 11 grams. Jeffrey's, five grams. Si no, six grams. The eye brushes, AliExpress's first eye brush, four grams. Jeffrey's, five grams. Blending brush, four grams. Jeffrey's is five grams. And the eyebrows, three grams, five grams. So I feel like the closest If you look at the handles themselves, which are perfectly identical, just ignore that part. So this bit would weigh the same. This is where the weight difference comes from. This part feels really, really cheap on these brushes. It doesn't even weigh anything. Like it just, it honestly just feels like paper. I feel like if I squeeze this, I could actually bend it. But Jeffrey's one, that's actually metal. There's no give in that at all. Artie, which one do you like better? Oh, really? Wow. Okay, so all my makeup is off and I'm ready to go, but before I start applying the makeup, I just want to remind you guys I'm not an affiliate of Morphe. Uh, I have no affiliation with their brand. I'm not friends with Jeffree Star. I'm not actually friends with any beauty gurus because I'm not a beauty guru, I'm a, a birdie guru. I can promise you Laura Lee is not paying me to make a negative review. And don't forget to use code ADOPTLOVE when you make a purchase at Morphe because uh, that way it goes to animal shelters. <laughs> So with that, let's jump into it. Okay, let's start with the brows. So I'm actually using this new brow pomade, which is Biscotti. So uh, here, hold this. We're gonna start with the Jeffree Star brush. And I'm really excited about this brush because it's very, very fine. Obviously a lot more fine than the uh, AliExpress one. I think this is a beautiful brush. It's definitely, just by the looks of it, my favorite brush from the collection. I like to take the pomade and put it on the brush and then I like to sort of smear it on the lid a little bit and just go back and forth to coat both sides of the brush evenly. And also I find that the product just kind of helps helps to pinch the hairs all together to make it nice and thin. I'll put Jeffrey on the left and then AliExpress on the right. Okay, I don't think that it's picking up the product very well. Uh, I'm kind of noticing that as it's going on my skin, it, it's kind of leaving like little bald spots on my brows. It's not really coming off properly. Okay, so I think that's the left brow done. I'm not a brow expert, so please forgive me. I did struggle a little bit with applying the product. I felt like it was a little bit patchy, but I did just keep going over and over and over, and it's eventually got there. I do really like the spoolie. I think the spoolie is beautiful. I love that it's a pink spoolie, but also it's really, really comfortable the way that it catches the hairs. I'm finding it really, really easy to feather out the brow as well with that spoolie, so I do really like this brush. I feel like with a little bit more use, I feel like I'll get used to this one, and it might, might become a regular brush that I use over the Anastasia one. Not sure, but I am getting that feeling because I would prefer to use a pink brush. I am just that basic. Nope, my turn. This one, obviously, the uh, AliExpress one, is extremely, extremely thick. So I'm going to sort of smear a fair bit of the product on there. Now this probably isn't intended to be used for brows. I mean, I really, really highly doubt that they would give you a brush this thick for brows, but it is the direct equivalent in the AliExpress set, so we'll give it a try. What? Oh, you, you wanna do it, okay. Mate, you don't even have eyebrows. So I've kind of changed the shape of my brows recently after my Korean makeup video the other day. I've started to try and draw them a little bit thicker and a little bit more rectangular rather than arched. 
So that does mean that I sort of have to draw directly on my skin just in this section here because in the past I've plucked my brows so that I have an arch there but now I'm actually trying to draw directly on the skin to fill in that skin there and uh, I was struggling with the Jeffree brush I felt like it wasn't applying the product directly to my skin without it looking patchy so gonna try and get into that little spot there with this AliExpress brush Okay, so the first thing that I'm noticing now is that it does look like this side is a little bit darker, but it's also a little bit thicker. So because the brush is a lot thicker itself, it's difficult to get a really fine line, unlike Jeffree's brush, which was a lot more precise. But this is actually laying the product down a lot heavier than what Jeffree's did. I'm using the same sort of pressure, putting the same amount of product on the brush, but you can definitely see that Jeffree's side looks a little bit lighter than this side, and that is because this one, it's not having that same issue with the patchiness. It's just laying the product directly onto the hairs of my eyebrow. This doesn't have a spoolie. That's one of the big problems there. So what I'm gonna just do is take the spoolie from Jeffree's, or is that cheating? Should I just leave it unspoolied? I will leave it unspoolied. I will just wipe some of the product off and then use the sort of clean-ish brush to try and feather out the inside of the brow. Okay, so that's brows done and I think I'm going to give this round to Jeffree's brush purely because, well, it's a lot more stylish, it has the spoolie, the tip is a lot finer so I was able to get a little bit more of a precise line. However, I do sort of struggle with the whole patchiness issue. That could also be how I'm using the brush. Like I said, birdie guru, not beauty guru. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Let's move on to the face now. So I've got the Morphe primer. Now this one that I picked up is the revitalizer, but there is also one, I think it's called an equalizer. The equalizer I believe is supposed to be mattifying, whereas this one is supposed to be hydrating. Whoop. Now I have already moisturized my face today because I watched Thomas Halbert's review of this foundation and he said that he really heavily moisturized because he was concerned that it would dry him out. Okay, so the primer doesn't feel tacky at all. It doesn't really feel velvety either. It just almost feels like a standard moisturizer and it smells like baby powder. Like 100% this primer smells like baby powder. Okay, now for foundation, the two shades that I picked up like I said before, I've got F1.60 and F1.30. Just looking at them in the bottle, I feel like 1.30 is definitely going to be much more suited to my skin tone than 1.60. But like I said, I picked up both because both had pictures of redheads and that was the only indication that this would suit my skin tone. On the box for these, it says it's 24 hour long wear. Now, any foundation can be 24 hour wear if you leave it on your face for 24 hours. That doesn't mean that it's still gonna be there at the end of the 24 hours. I'm not gonna put this one to the test, but it is 10 a.m. at the moment and I will be wearing this until at least 11 p.m. So we can at least give it a one day wear test. Sweat proof, transfer resistant and water resistant. Free of oils, fragrance and parabens and great for all skin types. Okay, that sounds like they've got a lot to live up to there. Also, this is made in America. Now I have seen that apparently this, this oxidizes. They reckon that you might put it on and it's your shade, but give it a couple of minutes and it'll have you looking like snooky. Okay, that actually does seem a little bit too light for me, but maybe it'll oxidize and become more my skin tone. All right, let's try F.160. Hmm. Okay, I actually think the darker one will be better for me. In the squeezy tube, it looks a little bit darker, but on my skin, it looks like more of a match. But let's just leave it for a minute so that it can oxidize because I'm a little bit concerned that if I cover my entire face in that one, I'll just look like an Oompa Loompa. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes now. And so the 1.60 is looking a tiny little bit orange and the 1.30 is definitely too white. This is more like John McLean kind of shade here. What I might actually do is take F1.60 and then put a little bit of this one with it to try and sort of find somewhere in between. So I'll put more of the 60 and a little bit of the 30. So let's start off with Jeffrey's brush. So this is the JS1. So it's not picking up a huge amount off the back of my hand. Now I always apply foundation with a beauty blender, always. Well actually I use a beauty sponge, it's not actually a beauty blender. I normally just use like a $2 beauty sponge that I get from Daiso. And I just don't like to use a brush because I always find that it's streaky. Here's hoping that Jeffrey has worked some magic and 
This is more of an airbrush rather than a paintbrush. If you've come here because you're a Jeffrey stan and you don't normally watch my videos, this is Archie. Why is he here, you ask? Because birds don't belong in cages and I'm not gonna lock him away just to do a makeup brush review. I'm actually really happy. I don't see any streaks anywhere. It literally looks like how it would look if I used a sponge, which I actually can't believe. Like, I'm slightly shaken. Not stirred, just shaken. The foundation is definitely full coverage, I will give it that. I don't know about the shade match though, I suppose maybe in a couple of minutes this will darken up again like it did when I sort of tested it down here. But let's try it with the AliExpress brush now. So this one definitely has a different shape to Jeffrey's. Okay, so that one picked up more of the product off the back of my hand than Jeffrey's did. Ooh, you can see on the lay down straight away, there's way more product there than there was when I used Jeffrey's. Okay, I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting rid of the streaks from the AliExpress brush. It's definitely laying down the product and leaving big stripes on my face. And I'm sort of working to try and get rid of the stripes, but this is basically the exact reason that I don't like to use brushes to apply my foundation. This one is also uh, seemingly pulling up my flaky skin. Just around this area in particular, I can see little bits of flaky skin around here. So I almost feel like the, the hairs on this brush are almost buffing the skin off my face, if that makes sense. In terms of the shape, you can definitely get more of a buffing action going with Jeffrey's, whereas this one is more of a sort of painting action like that. Okay, this one, I think Jeffrey's wins by a landslide. The brush like this, it's really just like a paint brush. It's really difficult to get a nice buffing action going. So it was really hard to kind of swirl it all together and eliminate the streakiness. So I do think Jeffrey's one wins here as well. So with that, let's move on to concealer now. With this one, I'm going to use this classic Morphe sponge to blend it in because this is, I believe, the same as the pink one that never turned up. I think I might actually just go for the C1.25, seeing as I went for the slightly darker foundation as well. We'll just go in under here and I'll just work one eye at a time. So this is obviously nothing to do with Jeffrey now. If there's anyone out there watching that bought the Jeffrey sponges and actually received them, please tell me down below what you think of them. I, I reckon the little tiny ones would, would be very good for going in under the eye here, because I do really struggle with this one, just trying to get right up into that corner there. It never can never do it for me. Okay, I instantly don't like the concealer. It's pulling away my foundation. I had put a little bit of foundation, not too much, but a little bit of foundation under the eyes and it's pulling it away and it's leaving these little kind of weird dots. Now I have horribly creasy under eyes, they're just worse than my laundry. And I've been using Tarte Shape Tape because I kind of feel like that's the one that works the best for me. This one is immediately looking creasy and like I said it's pulled away at my foundation and it's just kind of balling up. So not a huge fan, but let's set that one quickly with the Morphe setting powder. So I picked up two shades. I've got filter number one and filter number two. And can I just say, this is the most horrid packaging you've ever felt in your life. It feels cheaper than that $2 dress I was wearing from Wish last week. I think I'll go with filter number one for under the eyes, just to brighten it all up. It does come with uh, this little pad like this. It kind of feels a little bit velvety but I'm gonna use Jeffrey's powder brush. Now I feel like this isn't quite the right shape for getting powder in underneath the eyes. It's probably better for all over the face. Okay, I can't actually tell if that put any powder under there because I'm not seeing the powder, but the powder is translucent, so. This brush is extremely soft, I'll give it that. Very, very soft. If it's meant to be for under the eyes, I would expect it to be a tiny little bit more tapered. And if it's meant to be all over the face, I would kind of think it would be a bit bigger. But, Jeffrey's the expert, not me. Let's give the AliExpress one a try now on the right side. I've just noticed something. Jeffrey always says that he doesn't raise his eyebrows because if you raise your eyebrows, then you get forehead wrinkles. And boy, I'm always very surprised and I'm always doing this. And now look where it's got me. Can you see that? There's wrinkles everywhere, but they look like 50 times worse than they normally look. And I absolutely blame that on the foundation. So I'm just going to buff that in again with the brushes and then immediately lay some powder on there. 
I'm going to use the filter number two to do the forehead. I'm going to use that light colour for under the eyes and then this other one for everywhere else on the face. Okay, now going into contour, I'm going to use the Dior Backstage Contour Palette. So Jeffree's brush for contouring is this teeny tiny little brush like this. I'm a little bit nervous about this because I can see why this shape would be good for the nose, but I'm a little bit nervous about using it for around here. So, whoop. yes, hello. I don't think any amount of contour can save this nose, so I'll just kind of leave it at that. Oh boy, that looks that looks shocking. Okay, I don't really enjoy this for contouring, personally. I like a little bit of a bigger brush for my contour. I'm just sort of struggling with this just because it's so concentrated. I'm really struggling to blend it out nicely. I'll take this one that Archie's using. Okay, that's better for me. This shape and this size for my contour, I find it a little bit easier to use. Only issue with this one is I feel like it has deposited a lot more product on my face. So it's a little bit dark on this side, whereas Jeffrey's didn't pick up as much, which meant that I was able to build it a little bit better and more evenly. So I'll have to kind of work on this one for a couple of minutes trying to blend and buff. But the size of this one is definitely more my style for contour. Okay, so I think I'm going to give this round to the AliExpress brush just because for me applying makeup with this one is a little bit easier to buff out the contour than this one. But I feel like this brush is good for the nose contour but also I can almost imagine this being good for a highlighting brush. There is a brush that Too Faced just came out with for their highlight and it's almost the same as this and I have that and I like to use that for highlight. So I might end up washing this one off and using this as a highlight brush in the future. But for contour, I think I give the AliExpress brush the point in this round. I'm gonna jump back into that powder now and I'll, I'll try and use this Morphe sponge and I guess I'll carve out the cheekbones. I would normally use a loose powder, like Huda's new loose powder. I feel like I should possibly be able to use this like I would use a loose powder. Tell me if I'm wrong though. So I'll just use the flat side of this one and sort of go in there. Oh, that picked it up, okay, yep. Kind of. Okay, it's not quite as easy to carve it out using the sponge with this powder, but it is working. Because it's not a loose powder, it's a little bit harder to get that straight line. Okay, next in my routine is normally blush, but there is no blush, blush, blush. There is no blush brush in this set. So I'm actually going to try and use the powder brush. Now that's a little bit of a shame for me because I would like to keep the powder brush nice and clean for translucent powder, but I feel like it's the only thing that I can really use for blush here. And I'm going to use this little blush here that I got from my YesStyle Korean makeup haul. So we'll start off with Jeffree's one. Just swirl it in there. Okay, so I had cleaned all the powder off this one before I started using it and I feel like it's not really picking up very much product, which I don't mind because the amount of times that I've dipped into a blush and put it on my face and it's just smeared everywhere and it's been really hard to blend out, so it's not too bad. Okay, I'll give the AliExpress one a try now. Okay, neither of them are putting on the blush the way that I had hoped, so I'm just gonna go grab my usual blush brush, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I normally use Jaclyn's JH04 for my blush. Okay, so obviously that's not a round that I can really judge because there isn't a, a blush brush in this set. So next up is highlight. Now I'm gonna use Jeffrey's very own highlight, his Skin Frost in Peach Goddess. I feel like his brushes better work with his highlight. So his one is the Jeffrey, what do you call it? JS4. This is definitely different to what I would normally use for my highlight. I normally use this Morphe one, and I really like that one. I'm a little bit nervous because I've never used such a tiny, thin, long brush for highlight before. So let's give it a try. Okay, if you own this highlight, then you know that it's quite blinding. I'm sort of struggling a little bit right now. It's not really going on the way that it normally would. You know what, if I used this brush, 
with a highlight that I had never used before, I'd be like, no, oh, this highlight sucks because it's just not laying down the highlight the way that I'm used to. Uh -huh. But I know the potential of this highlight, so I'm not gonna blame it on the product. It's more the brush. It's just not quite what I would normally use. Put a little bit here. Let's give the AliExpress one a try now. I'm a little bit more used to this shape for a highlighting brush, so I'm sort of hopeful. Okay, jokes. <laughs> there's, there's literally nothing there. I'm putting a fair bit on the brush, like really sort of going in. It's just not laying down any product at all. Okay, well, Jeffrey's definitely wins in this case, but I'm not overly impressed with either of them, to be honest. Uh, it's just not gonna replace my usual highlighting brush, and I do actually feel like this one would be better. This is Jeffrey's JS3. You know what, I'm gonna give this a quick clean, and I'm gonna try apply some highlight with it. I just wanna show you guys what I mean. Like, I personally wouldn't like this for contour. I have a big hunch that I will like it for highlight, though, so let's give it a try. Ah, oh, there we go, see, straight away. Straight away that applied the highlight better. Yeah, so I feel like I'm gonna use this one as a highlighting brush, never gonna use it for contour again. This one, I just felt like it didn't really apply the highlight the way that I wanted it to. So, I mean, it's, seeing as I own it, I will find a use for it, but I'm not really finding it a very useful highlighting brush. The AliExpress one is just useless though, so because of how useless this one is, Jeffrey's one wins because at least it did actually put some product down on my face, whereas this one didn't do anything at all. Jeffrey wins that round too. I will revisit the highlight though once I've done my eyes because I want to spritz my face with setting spray and then put some highlight on top. I'll just put on a little bit of lipstick to make me feel a bit more alive and then I'll go into the eyes. This is just Fenty in Dragon... Dragon Mummy. Watch out Nikita, she's coming for your brand. I'm just gonna go over that with this new Too Faced gloss. This is Raisin the Roof. Wanna put it on for me? 30 Guru. <laughs> oh, hang on, hold, hold it. Nice. Okay, I'll take that powder brush and dust away some of this powder from down here. <laughs> the powder's not coming off. It's just like sitting there. It's not coming off at all. Definitely should have used loose powder. Far out. Okay, I actually thought that the translucent powder would be translucent, but it, but it's actually white. Like, like. Hmm. I might have to go back over that with the filter number two, which is like slightly colored, it's probably a bit more like my skin tone. I think I'm gonna have to use this and go over the top of some of that white powder because I didn't realize that my face was so white. What have I done? This is not looking the way that I want it to look. Okay, I have tried to fix things up as best as I can. I'm definitely noticing that on the AliExpress side, there's no highlight to be seen, just doesn't exist. Uh, I also feel like there's a little bit more lumps and bumps and texture on this side as well. And the brow is a little bit fuzzy and bushy, but I do actually think I like the brow better on this side. So now we're jumping on to the James Charles palette and we're using the last two remaining brushes in the set. So that is the JS5 and the JS6. I know that James Charles's catchphrase for his palette is unleash your inner artist, but unfortunately for me, my inner artist tragically passed away. So I actually have to rely on a tutorial because there isn't an artistic bone left in my body at this point in my life. So I found a really, really good tutorial on YouTube by a girl called Kenzie McBrown. Now Kenzie's- Hi guys, I hope you're all having a wonderful day and welcome back to my channel. Thank you. So Kenzie's tutorial is called James Charles Palette Beginner Eyeshadow Tutorial, which is excellent because I am indeed a beginner. This is the James Charles Palette. And best of all, 
she does this whole tutorial using just one brush. Now Jeffrey has blessed us with two brushes in this set, so I have a little bit more diversity going on here, but Kenzie does just use one brush. She has 47,000 subscribers, she deserves a lot more credit, her looks are beautiful. So I'm gonna set this tutorial going, and I'm just going to follow along. I'm taking the shade Canvas as my starting shade. Okay, she didn't say what she primed her lids with, but I'm just gonna use the MAC Painterly Paint Pot on both sides, and I'll just apply it with my fingers. This one's great because it's, it's very full coverage, and that's wonderful for me because my eyelids look like spider webs. Now, I have really, really manky eyelash extensions on at the moment, so please forgive me. Okay, now, Kenzie said that she was just using one brush, but I'm gonna go between the JS5 and the JS6, and the AliExpress weird pencil brush and this one. <laughs> right, so she went in with canvas first. So I'll use the JS6 to pack canvas all over the lid. I'm not gonna use the JS5 for this because I think that the JS5 is more of a crease brush. It's really, really pointed, whereas this one is a little bit wider and flatter. So I think that this should be good for laying the color down on the lid. And I'll use that one and compare it to that one from the AliExpress set. Okay, so she really sort of put it very, very heavily on the brush, she used canvas. It's okay to blend this color out because honestly you won't see it in the end and that is the whole point of using a base shade. So pick a shade that you know that matches your skin tone well enough where you probably won't see it towards the end. The AliExpress brush feels a little bit softer than Jeffrey's, I'll give it that. Okay, what's next? After that, I'm picking up the shade 518, which is orange. I also picked up a fair amount on this brush and I'm going to start to lightly work that into my outer crease area and just place that right there. Just really wiggling that side to side. Okay, so I'm sort of struggling a little bit with the JS6 to blend that out, so I will try the JS5 just to blend that orange shade out a little bit. Now, I do believe that these ones with the white hair are goat's hair, so this is not a vegan or cruelty-free brush set. So back in with the AliExpress brush now, I'll try and apply that orange shade. I need that. No, my turn. My turn. My turn. I might switch over to that pencil brush, but I don't trust that pencil brush at all. Okay, the colour has gone down a lot more pigmented with the AliExpress brush. You know, if I ever get big enough on YouTube that I can collab with legit YouTubers, I would love to challenge someone to come and do their makeup at my place with Archie climbing all over them. Because look, let's be honest, I might suck at doing makeup, but maybe I'd be better if I didn't have Archie climbing all over me. <laughs> so the thing is, the AliExpress second brush is literally like a, like a pointy finger, so I can't really imagine this helping me in any way at all, so I don't think I'm even going to try at the moment. So I'll just keep working with this one. This one is blending it beautifully, like beautifully. I have a bird chewing on it and I'm still able to get it blended really, really evenly. I actually feel like the AliExpress side is blended out a little bit better. Speaking of the shade Code James, that is our next shade we're taking and we're taking that right in the outer corner, kind of where we put the first color down. Uh, hmm. Right, so I'll try now the right eye with the AliExpress brush. And you know what, just for fun, I'm gonna give the, the pencil one a try just to pack the color down in the spot that I want it, but I'll blend it out with the other one. So she puts it right here. Okay, so next she goes into whatever that is. What shade is that? Mary, it's a really Mary. nice rose Mary. color. Picking up a good amount again on that brush. Are you right? Seriously, man? Now that's my collarbone. I want to really tap right along the lash line. We're going to continue to darken this up, so now I'm taking the shade No Beans. And if you have more than one brush, this is when you'd want to use it. So let's just say you have two brushes, you have a fluffier one and a little bit of a thinner one. This is when you'd want to use it because it's easier to do this with a smaller blending brush than this one. I'm just packing that shade. No beans, it's the darkest shade that we're using today. 
Okay, so I think that's as good as I can get it. I'm still slightly leaned more toward this side as being a little bit of a better blend, but I could be wrong. Maybe you guys might like this side better, please tell me. But moving on. So using my ring finger, I just picked up a lot of the shade Face and went to start pressing that on my eyelid. Okay, so she's just using her finger like that to apply this shimmery shade, which is Face. And then she uses Code James to kind of blend the two together. And I'm missing a brush. Hey! I'll even take a little bit of the shade Code James and just run that in the middle section of my eye to kind of blend together those two colors. I need that. No, I need that. But I applied the shade Spooky, it's that black shade, and I'll show you guys how I did that right along my waterline, basically right up against my lashes, and then I applied my false lashes on top of that. Today I'm actually using a brow brush. This is my brush I usually use for my eyebrows. I have two of these, so I used a different one on my eyebrows today. Okay, cool, so she uses an eyebrow brush, and luckily I have two of those at my disposal. I'm going to just press that in. As you can tell, I just barely touched my eye and it's very pigmented, which is great because I feel like blacks are honestly like the hardest color to get super pigmented and I feel like everyone's always looking for a nice, deep pigmented black. Again, just lightly stamping that on and honestly, it makes your eyeliner look a lot sharper and cleaner in the end when you take it in small sections. Okay, so she said, as you can see, it looks really clean. Unfortunately, with the AliExpress brush, it definitely does not look clean. Uh, it's such a chunky brush and it's really, really messy. This is more looking like a smoky black line rather than a, a black eyeliner kind of thing. It just looks like smoky black eyeshadow. So definitely don't give any points to the AliExpress one in this round for eyeliner. I think the Jeffrey one's definitely doing the trick though. It's applying it in a much more precise way. Okay, so I've finished up with mascara on the lower lash line and I think that the eyes are done now. So all there is left to do is try and reapply a little bit more of the highlight, but I'll use some setting spray first and then go over the top of it. So I'll use the same peach highlight and I'll use Morphe's infamous setting spray. I do like that this is like an aerosol kind of spray. It's really, really nice the way that it distributes the product. So, Birdos can't be around for this, goodbye. Okay, I'll give Jeffrey's brush another try. Okay, spraying the setting spray definitely helped with the Jeffrey brush. And uh, I don't really have high hopes for the AliExpress brush, but we'll give it a go. Okay, well, there's a little bit of product, a tiny little bit coming off, but this brush is a write-off for highlight. So that's it. Time for the narcissistic montage. Okay, so just having a look at my face as it is right now. I feel like the Jeffree side looks a little bit cleaner, definitely. I can see without a doubt that the foundation on the Jeffree side is flawless and this side it looks like it's all balled up and it looks really really messy. Also just above my eyebrow here where I have this really bad wrinkle, it almost looks like I have a little eyebrow there because it's so creased in really really deeply but it didn't do that on this side. And I do have even wrinkles there and there so I feel like that is something to do with the way that the brush applied the foundation. The foundation itself, it seems okay. I know people gave it a pretty bad wrap, it seems alright. You know what, it's, it's meant to be long wear and I'm about to head out for the day. I have dinner for my dad's birthday tonight, Pretty Pastel Pop's birthday, so I'll be eating dinner, wearing this full face of makeup, so we'll see how long it lasts. I know it looks a little bit uneven, but I don't think it's so uneven that I will look ridiculous in public. I think it looks acceptable. The Jeffrey eyebrow is definitely a little bit cleaner and sharper, but I actually think I like this eyebrow better because I feel like the shape of it just turned out better. That's not really to do with the brush, that's just my technique though. Now I did notice that when I tried to apply the contour with Jeffrey's brush, it lifted and peeled away the foundation just here. So there's a little bit of a bald spot on my nose just there, which didn't happen with the AliExpress brush. Foundation, Jeffree Star definitely wins. Powder, it's 
Kind of similar. Maybe Jeffrey wins because his brush is a little bit easier to kind of get in under the eyes and it's, it's a little bit softer. So I think Jeffrey wins that one. With the contour, AliExpress wins. I just don't really like this for the contour shape, but that's really personal preference. Uh, with the highlight, Jeffrey wins, but only because this one didn't do anything at all. I still don't really, really like this one for highlight. With the eyes, the pencil brush for me is just a write-off. I mean, that's really completely useless. It's so stiff and you can't blend it all with it. So that's a useless brush. Jeffrey's, they were nice, but I do feel like this one from AliExpress did the job just as well. Like if you have a look at my eyes, I don't, I mean, I'm not really a blending expert. I feel like in the hands of someone that knows what they're doing, you would probably get you know, a lot of good use out of the Jeffree ones. But for me, you know, I'm a very simple makeup user. I don't really expect a lot. So for me, this one is completely fine. I kind of think it's kind of a tie, but also I want to say the AliExpress brush because I mean, the set of seven brushes on AliExpress is literally $7. So it's a dollar per brush. Whereas these are $10 per brush, $74 I paid for the brush set. So it's just a little bit over $10 per brush. I do think that this AliExpress one is the winner based on price and the fact that I was still able to blend out the eye makeup fine with it. But then with the eyebrow brush, I would pick up a couple of these. I actually think I'm going to. I think I'll get one of these for eyeliner. Keep using this one for brows. I think this is an awesome brush. I think it's really pretty. I love the spoolie. That was really easy to use. I feel like this will be my go-to brush. If you're just going to pick up individual brushes from this set, get these two. Get the foundation one, this was epic, and get the eyebrow one. Uh, I would personally pass on the others, no tea, no shade. I just, from the way that I apply makeup as a beginner, the fact that this brush set is $7 and you get seven brushes and they do the job, in my humble opinion, very, very similarly to how Jeffrey's ones apply the products. I feel like if you're a beginner, you don't really want to spend very much money on makeup. I think you'd be fine just picking up some AliExpress brushes. But if you're a bit more advanced and you, you trust Jeffrey as a professional and you can afford it, pick up his set. I don't think you'd be disappointed. I definitely don't think you'd be disappointed. Plus, you get a really cool bag. I think this bag's sick. Like, I, I really, really like this. I will head out for dinner and I will come back in a couple of hours. It's going to be literally a full day wear test of this makeup. So I'll come back later and do a quick check-in for you. But in regards to the giveaway, like I said earlier, I am giving away the James Charles palette and a Jeffree Star brush set. So in order to enter, you have to be subscribed to me here on YouTube and you also have to follow my Instagram. And I will have a picture of the Jeffree Star brush set. This picture here, you just have to leave a comment on that picture and then that'll put you in the running to win. So I'm gonna head out for the day, see how this makeup wears. But in summary, I'm going to steal a Jeffrey trademark here and say that these products are definitely Archie approved. Are they Alex approved though? Yes, I approve them if you can afford them and you want to support Jeffree Star. If you don't have very much money, I think that you could get a similar result from cheaper brushes. But I definitely think to put a rest to the handle argument where people say the handles are the same, the Jeffree Star brushes are not brushes from AliExpress. The brush itself is custom designed by Jeffree and Morphe. You can see they've put a lot of thought into the cut and the design of the brush hairs themselves. These are not just brushes that they've picked up off AliExpress and chucked Jeffree's name on. That is not the case. It might be the case with the handles, but I just want you guys to think about it this way. Think about, you know, the classic Jeffree Star liquid lip. And there's plenty of other companies that use exactly the same lip container. You know, like Sugar Pill, for example. Sugar Pill's lip tube is identical to Jeffrey's, but that doesn't mean that the formula is the same on the inside. You can buy those empty tubes from China, which a lot of companies do. They just buy the empty tube and they put their own product inside. And it's the product itself that matters. So in this case, sure, the handles, I feel like he made a little bit of a mistake going for uh, handles that are so well known as AliExpress or cheap brushes. But just because the handles are cheap doesn't mean that the brush hairs themselves are cheap. I can see that he's obviously put a lot of thought and effort into the design of these. He's absolutely nailed it with this foundation brush. It's perfect. And the eyebrow brush, like I said, is great. And I guess for everyone's different makeup application and whatever level that you're at with your makeup, you would probably find that these other shapes and sizes are really great as well. So that is the brief summary. Good luck to everyone that's going to enter the giveaway. Oh, I didn't even review the James Charles palette. Oh my God, it's great. Look, do you really need me to tell you that? I thought it would be a good palette. It's a good palette. I found the colors very easy to blend. I'm interested in trying it out again, maybe 
doing a colourful look. If you want me to do a proper James Charles eyeshadow palette review where I do colours and all that sort of thing, let me know. But the colours that I used, I was really happy with them. I thought it's a, a great palette, really easy to blend. Please tell me what you think down below. I will do a little bit of a quick check-in now. Quick little check-in before dinner. So I think it's looking all right. It looks pretty nice in the sunlight with the highlight. Uh, I feel like foundation-wise on camera, this side looks a little bit more smooth than this side. The brows look kind of, kind of even-ish. But it's been a couple of hours now since I filmed. I've changed my clothes, so my clothes have come up over my head, sort of, you know, touched my face and everything, and it seems to be transfer resistant. Uh, I haven't reapplied my lipstick, so shout out to Fenty, it's lasting pretty well. Yeah, I'll have to check in after dinner. Really not happy about the forehead situation, but there's nothing that I can do about that. Nothing that I can naturally do about that forehead situation. Let's see, oh look, look at the, the patch on my nose though. Oh, it's really noticeable. So just just here, that's where it came off because of the Jeffrey brush. So uh, yeah, anyway, I will check back after dinner. So the makeup has officially been on for 12 hours. Now I did have a look when I was at the restaurant and I wasn't very happy. So uh, we'll have a look under this lighting now and uh, yeah, just like I thought, I look like a 40 year old. I mean, I do have a wrinkly forehead, but it's not usually this bad. <laughs> it looks horrid. Uh, so the makeup has definitely broken up around my nose, absolutely. I've also lost a little bit of the foundation from my chin and definitely in between my eyebrows. It's also really bunching up up around here as well. The eyeshadow is looking perfect. So good on you, James Charles. All in all, look, I'm not going to wear the Morphe foundation for 24 hours. 12 hours is more than enough and it's looking very, very cakey. My skin is feeling very heavy, very stiff, really not liking this formula at all. And man, my forehead hasn't looked this bad in a long time. <laughs> look, it is relatively long wearing, relatively long wearing foundation because it, you can't argue it is still there. It's just not comfortable and it has settled into spots that I don't want it to settle into. So uh, yeah, that's it guys. Don't forget if you want to win the Jeffree Star makeup brush set and the James Charles palette, you have to subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram and then leave a comment on the picture on my Instagram. So uh, let me know your thoughts below. Tell me if you picked up this collection for yourself and what you guys thought of it. So don't forget if you want to shop on Morphe, I recommend that you use the code ADOPTLOVE. It's set up to uh, send the proceeds to an animal shelter. So it's a, a great little way to give back. Hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Keep an eye out for our next few videos. We have some really fun ones coming up. So uh, hit the notification bell if you want to stay notified. Hopefully you'll get the notification. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mwah!